Ladies and gentlemen, this is a piece that just came out November 21st, 2017 in the Washington Post as opioid plague worsens a drug used to reverse overdoses can be difficult to access. Mm -mm -mm. Now, it's bad enough the Narcan is not working on the latest fentanyl analog that's out on the streets. Now it's harder to find Narcan, ladies and gentlemen. Tell you, you can't make it up. A drug used to reverse opioid overdoses has been hailed for saving thousands of lives nationwide, but some municipalities are having trouble accessing it. There has been a widespread push to distribute the drug Norloxone to first responders and civilians in places that have been affected by the opioid plague. It is now available over the counter at all Walgreen pharmacies, but in some places the strain on municipal budgets and a need for an increasing amount of Norloxone has made it difficult to keep enough in stock. That's right, because you know what? Somebody's got to pay for this stuff. It's not like they can give it to you for free. It costs money and it's costing a lot of taxpayer money right now. In Baltimore, public health officials have fewer than 10,000 doses available for use between now and July 2018. Because they do not have the money to purchase more, one dose costs between $70 and $90 for the type of the drug the city purchases, which is administered as a nasal spray. So it's per dose, the, each spray up the nostril is worth $70 to $90. And never mind if one person, which in many cases need multiple hits of Narcan before they come back, or the ones they give multiple hits of Narcan to, and it does not bring them back at all. Every day I have to make decisions about who has access to this medication and who does not, says Leanna Wynn the Baltimore City Health Commissioner, who has made it a priority to provide universal access to the drug. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and play this video, y'all. Can you tell me about how naloxone works and its purpose in your day-to-day -day work? Okay, so when an opiate is taken, it attaches to certain receptors in the brain and, and part of the process of those receptors is that it'll shut down the respiratory system. So you'll stop breathing. And if you don't breathe for five minutes, then you're going to die. So what naloxone does and what people will call Narcan, you know, that's the trade name, uh, it actually knocks the opiate off that receptor so that people start breathing again. And that's what we want because that's the immediate threat of death is they stop breathing. Mm -hmm. And what, what's so interesting and unique about this film is that we actively see you administering naloxone yes. and, you know, it, it's the access is incredible that we get through Elaine's eyes and through this, you know, through this entire cinematic experience. But how do you administer naloxone? I think you brought some with you I to show us. I did bring some with, with me. Actually, I brought a trainer. Now, uh, we were able to receive a grant through the company Kalia that makes this auto injector. Uh, which helped us probably save more than 1,200 lives uh, in the short time that we had that, and we've gone through all of those now. But this actually talks to you, so it's very simple to use. And this is a trainer, so there's no live Narcan in here. This trainer contains no needle or drug. If you are ready to use, pull off red safety guard. To inject, place black end against outer thigh, then press firmly and hold in place for five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Injection complete. So that's what you see us administer. This trainer 
in the documentary. Mm -hmm. Now, right now, because we don't have any more of these, but we're, we're very thankful to Leah for that. We also have these that were provided for us through another grant for, through WVU, and this is an angel version. And so basically what this is, it's a vial of Nar Narcan, and we put it together and we add a nasal aerator to it. And you do half the drug up one nostril and another half up another nostril. So it takes a minute to assemble, but you know we can also rescue breathe for somebody while somebody is putting this together. We see, so in the film, you do a lot of outreach and do. to other first responders and the entire fire department. Mm -hmm. What's so interesting about, you know, the response is that it's met with a lot of trepidation. A lot of the other firefighters and first responders' first reaction is, you know, do I have to do this? Do I have to sort of bear the burden of this responsibility? Well, you know, the interesting thing about that, that that's pretty realistic, you mm -hmm. know, because we need to educate our first responders just like we educate the rest of society on mm -hmm. what we are actually dealing with. But, you know, I took an oath to serve and protect life and property, and nowhere in that oath does it say I have the right to judge. So I try not to judge those suffering from substance use disorder. You know, I find that On the laughable. streets of Chillicothe, Ross County. They spent the greater part of the crack epidemic judging and criminalizing and throwing people in jail, but now they won't judge people. Uh, how nice, how convenient. The nation, she said, is in the middle of a public health emergency because of opioid abuse. If it were for any other reason, she said, any, an adequate supply of medication would be unacceptable. We are ration, rationing um, our very limited supply of naloxone at a time when people are dying every day, Wynn said. Part of the issue, public health officials say, is the price of the drug. Yeah, it, it's hilarious how the same people that put out the opioids are the same ones that are putting out the naloxone. I tell you, these folks really know how to play both sides of the fence, don't they? Two doses of an injectable form of naloxone, Evzio, costs 4500 up from $690 in 2014. That just go to show you the price gouging and how they're taking advantage of people that are suffering from a, a drug addiction. So they're suffering from a drug addiction and the pharmaceutical companies are taking it as a chance to jack up the price. That right there just go to show you, they really don't care about the people at all. The price of other forms of the drug, including the nasally administered Narcan, typically range from 70 to $150 per dose, per dose. That means each time they shoot this up your nasal, that's 70 to $150 just from that one spray. <laughs> the drug also come in a syringe that allows the drug to be injected intravenously. The rise of fentanyl, a powerful synthetic opioid that is now driving overdose deaths, has made it necessary for first responders and others to have more naloxone on hand. That's because it takes more to bring them back. And the more potent they're making the analogs, pretty soon the Narcan is going to virtually become useless, y'all because they already are making a fentanyl that is completely resistant to Narcan. I gave you that article just less than a few days ago. I did an article on that, and so did Tareen Rain. Okay, um, the drug is so powerful that it can take multiple doses of Narloxone to reverse an overdose. With fentanyl, you need more doses, said Tom Miller, 
the uh, West Virginia director of the National Volunteer Fire Council. Miller said, many in the state have trouble getting it and getting it replaced. In Washington, North Carolina, Doug Bassett, battalion chief of the city's fire and EMS services said there has been concern that the city about 100 miles east of Riley might run out of naloxone because of the high demand for the drug in the area. We wanna make sure we don't run out on our trucks while there's enough to keep on the trucks. We have to keep enough in our supply closet, he said. We have not run out of any, but we have come close. Yeah, see, they heavily depend right now on just this one drug to save their addicts. Whenever it gets to the point where they run out or the fentanyl is now like it's becoming so powerful that it's useless, ladies and gentlemen, they're going to be in a lot of trouble. And now that we are seeing fentanyl analogs out here that Narcan does not work on, 2018 is going to be way more deadlier than 2017. Bissette said he has just one dose in his storage room, but the department's truck are fully stocked, and he is expecting five more doses this week. In a statement, Kelio, which manufactures the auto injector naloxone, also known as Ezio, uh, said it has donated more than 280,000 naloxone auto injectors to public health departments, first responders, and nonprofit organizations. All right, we'll listen to this video here. The most important element of having this intranasal naloxone approved is that it represents a, a literally a lifeline. Someone who's completely uh, unresponsive, cyanotic, meaning they're gray, they have no oxygen, and not breathing. And you give them a dose of this intranasal naloxone, they don't have to be breathing, it doesn't have to go to the lungs. It's taken directly from the nasal passages, goes into the blood and then into the brain. And you can actually uh, resurrect someone. The, the basis for approval of this intranasal uh, form of naloxone was that you get levels of naloxone as fast as you do by an injection. It'll save, we estimate, thousands of lives a year. And I think that's really the most important, um, important element of introducing or having an FDA-approved form of naloxone. We think this would be the first step reversing an overdose for many individuals, maybe the first step in seeking treatment. So not only I think will it prevent deaths, but it will probably prevent people from um, having the type of enduring damage that can occur even if they are rescued. It may even cut down on that. It may cut down on hospital costs and have great societal value. And uh, hopefully it will bring people in and raise awareness about the, the problem of uh, uh, overdose and about addiction to opiates. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Tom Duddy, Director of Communications for Adapt Pharma, which makes Norloxone in nasal spray form, said there has been no shortages of their form of the drug. He said the drug has 94% insurance coverage, including with Medicare and Medicaid, and about 75% of patients pay a $10 copay or less for it. The company also has brokered uh, direct purchasing deals with a number of municipalities, a box of the drug, which contains two doses, uh, costs $75. Duddy said grant money and federal funding 
is available to municipalities to purchase the drug. The company donated 30,000 doses of naloxone to Hamilton County, Ohio earlier this year, and researchers plan to study how availability of the drug affects the overdose rate there. We need to help educate these folks on where the money's at and where there's available funding, he said. Um, but Robin, is that Rolini? an associate professor at the University of Virginia University School of Medicine said that the funding system can be burdensome. She said West Virginia receives 1 million to distribute 8,250 Norloxone kits earlier this year. They were, they were all gone in four months. Wow, 8,250 Norloxone kits? Woo, gone in just four months. That just go to show you how many overdoses are happening in West Virginia. That's what that is showing you right there. We give them out and then we wait for the next funding opportunity, she said. She said the state is dependent on federal government putting out requests for grant proposals, which are cumbersome. And take time. The national request model doesn't take into account local need. Some places might need to equip their police with uh, naloxone, while other places might want to give it to the friends and family members of known drug users. Places like West Virginia, she said, need to face the reality that the opioid plague is getting worse with the introduction of fentanyl and will require long-term investment. Wow, because they know this ain't going nowhere, ladies and gentlemen, they know it. Even their first responders know it. We don't have a long-term established distribution and funding plan for this drug for the state, she said, Cliff Johnson. Director of Clinical Compliance and Physician Services at Southeast Missouri Behavioral Health said his center has explained, expanded, I'm sorry, expanded thanks to a two year federal grant given to the state. But three months later, the center has nearly reached its patient limit and Johnston can't find money to help local law enforcement get the opioid antidote. And see, without Trump making this a national emergency, they're gonna always struggle to get funding for Narcan. There still is not funding to help cover those costs, Johnston said. The firefighters and the police have to foot their own bill for Narcan. Wow. There you go. So some places are struggling to keep up with the supply and demand and other places are, I guess, okay for now. Please tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Please leave your comment and subscribe and don't forget to hit on that notification bell. Peace, family.